everyone, this is Emily. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a tulip field picture with acrylic paints. Okay, this is the photograph that we will be working off of today for this lesson. I think it's a really nice photograph, but the other reason I wanted to use it for this lesson is because it gives us a chance to talk about perspective and uh, some more blending techniques. So we will be talking about that in this video as well. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is sketch our design. Now, I actually sketched my design already on this canvas, so I'm going to go over it with a Sharpie so you all can see how I did this and where my lines are. Generally, I would never recommend that you draw a Sharpie on your canvas. When you sketch on your canvas before you start painting, you are going to want to use very light pencil lines for a couple reasons. One is if you need to erase your lines, it will be easy to erase them if we sketch lightly. But the other reason is sometimes if we have dark pencil lines or dark lines at all on our canvas, once we start going over with paint, it can be really hard to cover up our pencil lines, especially with the lighter colors. So I'm just gonna go over with Sharpie just so you all can see the lines that I made, but if you're following along with this video at home, um, you know, you would use pencil for this part only. So I'm going to start by drawing my horizon line. So for the horizon line, I'm going to draw a line, horizontal line, all the way across my canvas, about in the middle of the canvas. Next, we're going to pick our vanishing point. So again, we're talking about perspective, and I'm going to start right here. So I'm going to say right here, this section of my line is going to be my vanishing point. Your vanishing point can be anywhere you want on your horizon line. So this is the part where all of our land, all of our perspective lines are going to meet. So from here, I'm going to start drawing the lines that are going to separate my rows of tulips. So I'm just going to start from my vanishing point and start drawing lines all the way down. I recommend you use a ruler for this, but again, since I've already sketched my lines, and I did use a ruler when I sketched it with pencil, I'm just tracing over so you all can see. So I'm starting my lines from the same point and going down to the bottom of the canvas. Hard to draw straight lines from this angle. When you're drawing your lines, it would probably be a lot easier to put it flat on the table, but that's okay. All right, so now you can see all of my lines are coming from the same area that I pointed out here. When we're talking about perspective, anything that is closer to us, so the closest part to us is going to be here on the canvas, is going to be larger than the parts that are farther away. So from working from my vanishing point, you can see that all of my areas, all of my rows that are going to be tulips, the farther away that they get from me when I'm standing here, the smaller the areas get. Okay. Now we're going to start working on our land that's on the horizon. So one big focal point that we have in this photo is the windmill. So for the windmill, I'm going to start with a curved shape like this. Did another circle right here. And then something that's very distinct in the photo is that there are three lines, or two lines, to make three areas that are going straight down on the windmill. And we're going to want to sketch those lines because we're going to use that to talk about how the light is hitting that curved section of the windmill. So I made two lines right on my windmill there. Now I'm going to do just a couple long triangles. Now 
Now I'm going to add some trees and some bushes, some hills on my horizon line. Land is not totally flat generally, so I'm just gonna start building up my horizon line. Every, all of the land that we're drawing on our horizon line is going to be small because it's far away from us. So the windmill is going to be the biggest part and then everything else is going to be smaller than that. So the trees are not bigger than the windmill, the hills are not bigger. Just gonna do some very basic shapes here so I can follow along with them when I'm painting. And our sketch does not have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly what we're painting. We're going to use these just as guidelines. Okay, so now that we have our basic sketch ready, we can go ahead and start painting. Before we start painting, I'm going to talk a little bit about the brushes I'm going to use today. So I'm going to be using four brushes mainly for this. If you don't have these brushes in this exact size or shape, that's okay. You can use any brushes that you already have at home. I'm going to talk about why I'm using these brushes, how they're going to be helpful for the painting that we're doing today. And if you have something similar, that's great. But if you don't, it's really any brush that you use is going to be okay. The first brush is this big flat brush. So this brush is three fourths. It's nice for our background that we're going to do to have a big wide flat brush. So if you do have something like this, that's going to be helpful. If you have something smaller, that's okay. You're just gonna have to maybe do a few more coats back and forth. The next brush that's going to be helpful for this is a round brush. So this is a size 10 brush. Again, if you have something a little smaller or a little bigger, that's fine. The round brush is going to be really helpful for the flowers in this painting. I have another just smaller flat brush that I'm going to use for some of the other parts that, we're, that are going to be flat that we need to cover a lot of space in the image. Um, but that I don't necessarily need the bigger brush for. If you don't have a smaller brush like this, then the big flat one that you have is going to be fine. And the last one I have is a small round brush. So this is a size two. It's helpful to have a small round brush for all the little details that we're going to have to do on the windmill and maybe some of the trees and bushes and hills in the background. So anything small that you have is going to be helpful. Okay, I wanna talk real quick about the paint that we're using today. Um, this lesson is going to be uh, using acrylic paint. So um, there are a lot of different kinds of acrylic paint. I am using um, paint from a big bottle. It actually comes in gallons and half gallons. It's a pretty fluid acrylic paint, so it's much thinner than what would come in tubes. So you can use any acrylic paint for this, but I just wanted to note that there are different consistencies to acrylic paint. So I have a couple more here. This smaller tube that I have is much thicker than the paint I'm going to be using today. So when you have thicker acrylic paint, it's going to be more opaque. Um, it's going to give you more texture in your painting, um, but you can see they are small bottles. So when you are building your palette up with a um, heavier acrylic paint, you're going to want to use less paint on your palette with the uh, thinner, uh, more fluid paint that I'm using. Um, you'll see on my palette, it's going to make bigger um, bigger amounts at one time and we need those bigger amounts to kind of spread out. So depending on what kind you have and what kind you're going to use, your palettes might look a little bit different than mine. So if you are using acrylic paint out of a tube, you're going to want small paint areas, um, a small amount of paint for each color on your palette. If you're using something that comes in a bottle, so even if it doesn't look like this bottle, if it comes in a little bottle like this, you'll notice that it starts to spread out a little bit more once it's on your palette. The heavier bodied paints in tubes like this will kind of stay as little dollops of paint. So any paint will work for this. If the paint that you're using does not look like my paint once it's on the palette, 
that's probably why because you're using a heavier paint which is totally fine okay so let's go ahead and get started when painting I like to work from the background to the foreground so the very background of this picture is going to be the sky so that's where I'm going to start for my sky I have blue and white on my plate I'm just using a paper plate for this if you have another kind of palette, that's great. If you don't have a paper plate or another kind of palette, tin foil actually works really well for a makeshift palette, and then you can just throw it right away, or you could actually rinse it off and reuse it. So anything that you already have just to put your paint on will be good. So before I start painting, I'm going to make a lighter blue for my sky. You can see in the photograph that we have here, the top of the sky is going to be darker than the bottom, which is more of a white, so we'll talk about that. But either way, the top of the sky is a very light blue. So you see I have my dark blue right out of the bottle and my white, so now we're going to make a lighter blue for that top part of the sky. When making colors lighter, we always want to start with the lighter color and add the darker color. So what I mean by that is we're going to start with the white. So I'm going to scoop some of my white over to another part of my plate. I'm going to dip my brush one time in this dark blue and then mix it with the white to get a lighter blue. So now I have three colors on my palette. I have my white, I have my dark blue, and I have my light blue. If I need to make more light blue, that's okay. Just scoop up some more white, add a little bit more of the dark blue. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start painting my sky here. When we paint the sky or any background like this, we wanna use big, long strokes. So we do not wanna paint our sky vertically with strokes that go up and down. Long strokes that follow kind of the natural, um, natural way that the sky looks in this photograph. So I'm using the light blue that's on my brush. Started with a lot of light blue and now I'm moving down to more white. So now I have some light blue that's still on my brush. I haven't washed it yet, but I'm going to dip my brush into the white to start making a lighter blue that's going to get lighter as we go down. So I'm gonna use the light blue that's already on my brush and kind of mix that in with white and mix it right on the canvas here. So I'm putting this lighter blue right below my first blue that I used. Once I have my lighter blue, I'm going to start working back up to my dark blue and go back and forth over that so that it helps everything blend together. We're working our way down to our white that's at the bottom. Now, since my white and my light blue are right next to each other on the palette, I'm going to mix a little of them together. So I'm just mixing half and half white and the light blue to get a lighter shade of blue. So now we have four colors on our palette. We have the dark blue, the white, the sort of medium blue, and then an even lighter blue. So I'm going to use this lightest blue that we just made to kind of be the middle blue. Now that we have some white on our canvas here, it will be easier to blend this lighter blue together. Sometimes when you don't have enough paint on your canvas, it can be hard to blend the colors together, so that white kind of helped us out. I'm painting right over the lines that I did. If you are worried about losing your pencil lines, you can go over them a little bit darker. Because this windmill is going to be a dark brown and sort of like almost a black, it's okay if we go over it with darker pencil lines because the colors we're going to use are going to cover it up anyway. the white. 
white at the bottom. So I'm adding just white to my brush and I did not wash my brush yet. So this brush still has a little bit of light blue on it and now I'm just dipping in the white and painting this bottom part here near the trees and my horizon line. y'all can see this. All right. Okay, so we have a nice sky to work with now. Before we start painting the next part of our canvas, I want to talk about the importance of washing your brushes thoroughly. So I have my light blue on the brush here that I just used and I have a cup of water. The proper way to wash your brushes thoroughly is to press the bristles of the brush against the bottom of the cup of water that you're using. So I'm really pressing the bristles down. You can see how quickly my water turned from clear to this light blue color. Pressing it down. So now, I, this brush was already naturally blue, but now all of the paint is off of my brush and it's super wet. So I'm going to wipe it on some paper towels. It's really important when you start to paint again that you're using a clean, dry brush when we are using acrylics. So different paint kind of has different rules, but for acrylic paint, we want to start with a clean, dry brush every time. So now my brush is clean. I've dried it off. There's no extra paint. When I paint on anything, no color comes off. So this is ready to use again. Remember to wash your brushes thoroughly. And even if you're not ready to wash your brush, if you are using acrylic paints, it's important to at least put your brush face down in the water. One of the advantages to using acrylic paint is that it dries very quickly, but that also means that it can dry on your brush very quickly, and that will ruin your brush or it will be hard to clean out. So if you're not using it, just put it in your water cup if you wanna come back to it quickly. But if you are cleaning it, rub it against the bottom of the cup, and then make sure to dry it off really well. So now while the sky is drying, we're going to start working on the, our flower parts. This is going to take a few layers. When you look at this photograph that we're working from, you can see that under all these flowers are the stems and the leaves, some green parts. So we're actually going to start with the green and then we're going to put the flowers on top once that dries. So again, working from the back to the front, what's on the bottom of our image, what do we need on the top of our image. So for the flowers, instead of going in just with my regular green that I have here, which is actually pretty dark, I'm going to make it a lighter green using yellow. Remember, when we make colors lighter, we don't always need to mix them with white. We can actually get different colors if we use other colors to mix them. It's also important to keep in mind that um, you don't need to use the colors right out of the bottle or the tube. So like I said, this is my green that I'm working with. It's a really dark green, so I can't put that right on. This green does not match the green from the photograph I'm working off of, so I'm using yellow to make it lighter. Just like we talked about with the sky, when we're making a new color, mixing colors together, we always start with the lighter color. So I've scooped some yellow over here, and then I'm gonna go in with my green. So take a little green and mix it into my yellow. The advantage to this is if we need to make the color darker, we can always do that. It's easier to make colors darker than it is lighter. So we'll slowly mix our dark color in. I'm pretty happy with this green that I made with green and yellow. So I'm going to use this to go in and do my stems and the leaves that will be underneath the tulips. So for this part, I'm using that smaller flat brush that I talked about. If you do not have a smaller flat brush, you can use your big flat brush. These areas are pretty large, so that will probably be fine. So I'm painting these triangles here with this green that I have. I 
I talked when we did the sky, I talked about following the natural direction of the sky with your brush strokes. The same thing applies here. I'm using long brush strokes that are going in the direction of my rows of flowers. So I'm not going across my whole canvas. I want to think of these as individual pieces because they're all going to be different colors. And I'm following the length of these triangles that I have. Okay, last section. While I'm painting my last section here, I want to just use this time to tell you all about a couple other things. The canvas that I'm working on is a stretched canvas. This is a 16 by 20 inch canvas. You can use any canvas you want, any size you want, any shape you want. So that, uh, the size of my surface and the kind of canvas this is, is, you know, not necessary for this project. Um, again, the canvas I'm using is stretched, so the, the canvas is stretched over a wooden frame, but if you have a canvas board, that's totally fine too. The reason I want to talk about this is when you have a stretched canvas, there is a little bit of an edge here that stretches over the canvas frame. So if you would like to paint the edges of your canvas right here on this side while you're painting, if you would like your painting to extend over the side, that's something to think about when you are doing the two parts that I just did, the sky or the ground. So when we go around, we want to paint on the sides of our canvas too. The other thing you could do is once you're completely done with your painting, you could paint them a solid color, a black, or any other color to kind of make your own frame. So just around this edge, or you don't have to paint them at all, but just wanted to give you some options. So now I have my base color of my flowers. So I'm gonna let that dry, and then we're going to start our next part. So for our windmill, I actually put four colors on my palette. I put white, yellow, brown, way too much black. It came out really quickly. So I talked about 
earlier how we have three different sections for this windmill that we're going to do. We are going to make three shades of brown. I'm going to make a light brown, a medium brown, and then a darker brown. So again, I'm not using the brown right out of the bottle. I'm going to mix it with some yellow and some white. So I have my lightest brown here. Now we'll make our medium brown. Same colors, a little less white. Then our darkest brown, I'm just going to take some brown and a little bit of black. So we have our light brown, medium brown, dark brown. And for this part, because the windmill is so small, I'm really going to have to get in there um, with my smaller brush. I'm using that small round brush, the number two brush. So I have my clean brush here now. I'm going to start painting the sides of this with my three browns. So this part all the way over to the side, I'm going to use the light brown for. We're going to use the medium brown for the middle part. When I'm painting this, I'm being really careful with my brush. So just using the tip of my brush, making sure I outline the sides of the shape I'm doing carefully, and then painting on the inside. And then my darker brown for this side over here. So by mixing three different browns and doing them on different parts of this, I'm making my windmill sort of more like the picture that we're working off of. I'm going to use my medium brown with a little more of the brown from the bottle for this top part of our windmill up here. Okay. Now for these shapes here, I'm going to use my darkest brown right here. I'll take my darkest brown that I painted with this, very tip of my brush, and paint these shapes. <coughs> There's no rush to do this. We can take our time, go slowly. Make sure we stay in our sketched lines. Okay. And I take a little bit more of my darker brown, the one I just used for these areas. I'm going to very gently put a little bit on the top part of our windmill. So just a little bit of paint on my brush. I'm just going to kind of swipe it over here a little bit for a little more transition. Okay. On the photograph I'm working off of, there's a little white line in between this bottom part that we did and this top dome. So I'm taking the tiniest bit of white on my small brush. I'm just going to do a little definition line here. Put a little more white up here on the side. Okay. Now we have our round windmill.
I'm going to take my brush with no paint on it, just blend these together a little bit. A little more even transition in between these. So no paint on my brush, just using a clean brush to blend these a little bit together. This part is kind of optional. I just think it's nice for the transition to have these a little bit more blended instead of those bold lines. Okay, so now we're going to start working on the land that's on our horizon line over here. You can see as I'm doing this, I'm jumping all around my painting. I did my sky while that was drying. I did the first part of my ground while that was drying. The sky at that point had dried, so I went ahead and did my windmill. Now I'm doing my land. Once that's dry, or once I finish that, this part that we did will be dry and then we can start working on our flowers. So I'm jumping all around as I go. It's important to let your paint dry on your first layer before you go back to do your next layer. And I'll talk more about that when we do our flowers on our ground here. So let's do our land up here. I'm gonna use my same green and yellow palette that I started with. In the photograph, there are a lot of different shades of green happening. Uh, I'm gonna kind of just pick and choose the shades that I want. There's no right or wrong way to do this. We're using this photo for inspiration and I'm gonna take from it what I want to use in my painting, but it's okay if I don't copy it exactly. Obviously it's a photograph, we're doing a painting, they're going to look different. So for this first strip right here, I'm going to use a similar color that I used for my ground, but I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. So just like we did the ground before, I'm taking my yellow, taking my green, mixing them together. Put a little bit more green so that I get a darker color. So I'm using this color here for this first part of trees or bushes, using my small brush. Acrylic paint is really great to layer with, so the first time we go over this, it might be a little bit light, but it's nice to get that color down so when we go back over it, we have something that we're working on top of. So this is just going to kind of be my first layer, like the ground is my first layer, just kind of mapping out where I'm going to paint everything. For the next part over here, in the photograph I'm working with, there's much more yellow in it. So I'm going to take some yellow, take some of the green that I used for the other part and mix that in. And to get a new kind of green shade, I'm actually going to add a little bit of white as well. So I added some white to my plate, Put a little more green in this. I'm going to use this shade of green. It's, it's actually pretty similar to the ground. I just added some white in it and a little bit more yellow. Again, this is our first layer, so I'm just getting it in. I'm going to show you what we're going to do for our second layer here. When you are layering like this, it's important to start with a lighter color. If we put a darker color on our first layer, it's going to be harder to get our light colors on top. Okay, so I kind of have some base colors there. I'm gonna go back over. So I'm looking at the photograph I'm going to start by making this area a little bit darker. So I'm going to use a little bit of green, just my that very dark green out of the bottle. Kind of a different kind of brush stroke. Instead of going back and forth, I'm going to start tapping my brush up and down. So 
tapping like this. Because these are bushes or trees, we want to get a little bit more texture. We don't want it to be totally flat. Tapping up and down. I'm going to start to do more of the same thing over here on this side. So I have green. I'm going to start tapping up and down. Because we're using such a small brush for this, we're getting kind of this like leafy hill design. These little areas here are going to be some of my trees, so I'm taking that dark green, just putting a little bit on tops of the trees here. We'll go back in with the brown for the trunks. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with my land on my horizon now. Again, it's not exactly like the picture, but this is how I want it in my painting. more on this side with the texture that I put on the other parts. I'm choosing to go in with a lighter green in this area so I took the green that was already on my brush and just dipped it in white. Now I'm just mixing right on my canvas. With the green that was already on my brush and a little bit new white. When we do this up and down strokes that we're doing, we can kind of use it to help not have the tops of our hills so defined. So I'm just padding a little bit more on top. So you can see the top here is a little bit more frayed than just a straight line because I'm going back and patting the paint on top. So I have my land on my horizon. While that is drying, eventually I'm going to go back and just add a little bit of brown to the trunks of my trees. But while we let that dry, we can start working on our flowers. So for our flowers, I'm, I'm going to paint it similarly to the photo that you see here that we've been working off of going to change a couple parts up. I did my line, my rows of flowers a little bit differently than the photo. I don't have quite as many different sections, so we're going to simplify this a little, but I am going to be working with similar colors here, so I'll show you how to get those colors. The first row that I'm going to start with is the yellow row. So I'm going to do this section yellow, yellow flowers. So on my palette here, I have white, yellow, red, and purple. Those are the colors I'm going to use for my flowers to make it similar to the photo. And obviously from this, we're going to make a lot of different colors. So starting with our yellow. If I just put this yellow right out of the bottle of paint on 
to my canvas for the flowers, it's going to be very transparent. You will be able to see the green underneath it, and I want to be working on top of the green. So to make it a little more opaque, I'm going to mix some white in with it. So doing what we learned, take some white to the side, scoop up some yellow, mix it together. This yellow is a little too light, I'm going to add a little bit more. I don't necessarily want to change the color of the yellow, but mixing white into it will make it more opaque. Okay, so I have a nice yellow mixed with white here. And for this part, I'm going to use that round brush, the bigger round brush that I used, or that I told you about in the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to start painting my flowers. We're going to do a similar brush stroke um, as we use to the um, land on our horizon. So we're going to go up and down, up and down. I'm going to do this section. I'm going to start by just doing some dots of yellow. I'm going to keep the dots far away because we do want to see some of the green in between for the leaves and the stems. And I will go back and fill in as much as I want. For right now, just getting my color on. Remember layers. I'm going to layer the paint. The farther away that it gets from me, so the closer to the top of this triangle, the flowers are going to look like they are closer together to each other. So for that section, I'm going to use the tip of my brush and I'm basically filling this in filling in this triangle with yellow. As the flowers get closer to the bottom of the triangle, they're going to spread out more. So I'll leave more yellow space. Sorry, I'll leave more green space. Okay, first layer of my yellow flowers. In the picture we're working off of, you can see that while most of the row that I started with is yellow, there is also some orange in it. So we're going to go in and add some orange for our next color. So we make orange by mixing yellow and red together. From what we learned earlier, doing it again, starting with our lighter color, moving it to the side, a little bit of red. Orange. This is a very dark orange. I'm going to mix a little more yellow in. That's a good example. If I had taken less red, I would not need to mix more yellow in at this point, but not too much. This is a nice orange, a little bit lighter. So I'm going to start adding some orange in here, and I'm going to add it to the tops, some of the tops of my yellow that I already have show that these flowers are kind of mixed in. Work a little bit up, but I see the orange is mostly towards the bottom. Okay, first layer of our yellow. Now that I have this great orange that I really like, I'm going to go in in the orange section. going to mix a little bit of white into my orange, just like I mentioned, to make it a little bit more opaque. And the farther away we get from the bottom, the flowers go closer together. So making them close together up here, no green showing in between. And the farther away we get, the more spaces we see in the flowers. So I mentioned that the paint I'm using for this is pretty thin. So 
these are our first layer of flowers. After it's dry, I'm gonna go back in and add another layer so that they become brighter. If you were using a more heavy bodied acrylic paint, you might only need one layer of this. All right, my next big section right here has red flowers. This time I'm gonna start farther away. I'm gonna start up here. Because this red is so dark, I'm not going to add white to it yet. I'm just using the red right out of the bottle. leaving some green spaces as we get closer to the bottom. We're really simplifying these flowers. I am focusing more on the color than I am on the actual details of the flowers. So this, of course, will not be as detailed as the photograph we're working from. Just using it for inspiration. red layer down. Okay. So you can see I'm leaving a little bit of green space in between each of my rows. So we'll kind of keep those separated for now. I'm going to go ahead and start on my next section, which in the picture is a pink color. So I already have some red on my brush from the, the row that I just did. I'm going to go ahead and just mix it right into the white because I'm making pink, so red and white. I already have some red on my brush, so instead of scooping more up, I'm going to start slow. And this was actually just enough. So I don't even need to get any more. Next section is this light pink. Leaving more green in between as we work down our triangle. got my pink down. This section over here was a little orangey in the picture, orange pink. So I'm not washing my brush. I'm going to use the pink that I just had on my brush and dip into that orange I was using. You also see in the photograph I'm working from that there is quite a bit of green space in between these two rows. So I'm going to leave that green there. and just do the top part of this triangle. You can see what's coming off my brush is a little bit pink and a little bit orange.
All right, so I'm gonna jump back over to this side and start some more pinks and purples over here. I have washed my brush because I'm about to use purple. You can see, you heard me say, that some of these colors, I did not wash my brush in between and I mixed the colors with the paint that was already on my brush. The reason that I have washed my brush for this purple part I'm about to do is because before I had orange on my brush. Orange has yellow in it, and yellow and purple are complementary colors. When we mix complementary colors together, colors that are across from each other on the color wheel, if I had mixed those together, I would have gotten more of a brown color than I wanted. So I could not have gotten the purple color that I wanted with that orange that was on my brush. Now, if I had had only pink on my brush, pink is only red and white mixed together. Red and purple are next to each other on the color wheel, so that would have been okay. But because I had the yellow on my brush in the orange and yellow is across from purple on the color wheel, I needed to wash my brush to start with my purple. So I'm starting with a clean brush for this next part. I'm gonna sort of go for a lavender color. So I have my white, dipping in the purple, mixing it into the white. This purple that I have is really thin. I'm gonna take more than I kind of normally would with other colors. I have this purple. Ooh, I'm getting close to my yellow. Just said, we don't want that. <laughs> so I have my purple here. I'm gonna start going in. I'm kind of changing it up now from the picture. I'm gonna go in here with my purple. Make it a little bit darker. This section is more on the side here, so even though I'm working down my triangle, it's not getting closer to me. It's still on the side. So because this is still far away, I need to keep some of this section up here a more solid color, not show as much green. Now the bottom of the triangle down here is getting closer to us as the viewer, so I'm going to add, um, make sure I still see some green in between at that part. All right, and now I'm gonna do another pinkish color here. I'm gonna keep that purple on my brush so, um, so that I have kind of a different pink than I do over here, but I'm just gonna take some white and red and add it to the purple. Get like a darker pink, like a more magenta color. can see that in these two sections I have some white popping up. That's just the white from when I was mixing these together. I didn't mix it completely together to get a solid color. I kept some white on, but we're going to talk more about that when we go over all of these flowers with the detail layer. Alright, so I have the first layer of my flowers on there. We're going to let that dry and we'll come back to our detailed layer. While we're waiting for our flowers to dry, I'm going to put a trunk on my tree here. I zoomed it up really far so you all can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the same idea that we did with our windmill, having it go from light to dark. 
on my trunk. This is going to be very slight, a slight difference, so that's why I brought you in closer for this. So I'm using the brown palette that I already have from my windmill, so same colors. So I'm taking this same light brown, I'm gonna put a strip up to my tree. Taking my medium brown, strip up, taking my dark brown. Okay, it's small and you know, we're not gonna see it that well in the picture, but I wanna stay consistent here with my trees. So if we are saying on the windmill that this part is lighter than this part, that means that this part of the tree is going to be lighter than the uh, other side of it. So I'm gonna stay consistent in my light source here. So that is what my painting will look like with the trunks. Okay, let's finish up our details on the flowers now. So I've let the paint on the flower sections dry a little bit, so now I'm gonna go back in and add some detail. If you wanted to, you could stop here in the painting. We have very big sections of these colors that are all kind of the same, so I just wanna go in and put some more shades in. I'm gonna start with the orange, and I'm going to use the orange that I already mixed that you all saw, and I'm adding just a little bit of red to it to make kind of a new shade that we're gonna go in with. And I'm using my smallest brush for this, so the brush that we used for the windmill and everything in our horizon line. And I hope you all can see this okay. So I'm gonna go in and just add some very small details of this darker orange right on top. This is just giving another layer to the flowers that we have. So I'm going to add a darker layer with my little brush. And I'm gonna add some lighter layers. So at the end, what we will have for each of the tulip sections is the medium color that we went in with, and then our darker shade and our lighter shade. using that same up and down brush stroke. So just patting the paint on to make these little dots. Like I said, we're, we're not, I'm not gonna do the whole tulip shape. I'm just gonna kind of get the, the general colors down that I saw in the photograph. So it's gonna be a little blurred, a little more abstract. I'm gonna go in and do the same thing with my yellow. I'm gonna take my yellow right out of the bottle. You remember we made our yellow a little bit lighter with that, that white. So now I'm just gonna use my regular yellow, start adding some more color to that row. I did not wash my brush in between this, so I still have a little bit of that orange on it. And that's going to make these little sections of orange in my yellow row. Orange and yellow are next to each other on the color wheel, so it's okay if they mix together. Also, yellow is a part of orange, so it's already in that color anyway. I'm gonna wash my brush. Let's jump over to the red. So I just used red right out of the bottle. So now when I go in with my next color, I'm going to mix a little bit of white and red together. So what I have is a really dark pink. I'm gonna start adding that here. So we get another shade on our red. So some of the lighter colors I'm going in with a darker color, some of the darker colors I'm going in with a lighter color. Either way, we're 
We're going to add more shades to each one. So, no, it's hard to see exactly what I'm doing, but you can see that this is starting to be filled in a little more with some more shades. Still keeping a little bit of that green in between. I'm going to take that pink that I used before, a little darker shade, a little darker. Start going in with my second layer on the pink. Getting the end of my triangle. Okay, now remember up here we did pink and orange. So I'm just gonna go with a little bit of this pink and add more spread out dots, but I just wanna brighten this section up a little. And I'll go in with my orange. So this whole row can be a little bit brighter. This is all far away, so it's not even going to really, it doesn't even really look like flowers in the photograph. We're just looking at colors, trying to put the different colors down. So 
So you all can see that looks a little bit uh, brighter than what we had before. All right, I'm gonna touch up my purple and pink sections here. I mentioned to you all my purple was so thin, so I'm gonna mix a little bit of white in it just to make it a little bit more opaque, but I am doing a, a darker purple now. So I still want some of my light purple to show through. Just like the other colors, we added our second layer too. So I'm not covering up all of my light purple, just adding some of these darker areas. As I'm getting closer to the other color, I'm slowing down, not going as fast. Slightly touching it so that I keep the purple in its own area here, its own row. here. Happy with that. I'm going to jump back over to my kind of darker pink purple that I have here. I'm going to add a little bit more purple to that color we mixed for this one. And I'm going to add a little bit more red too. So more purple and more red for the new color in this section. I don't want it to look too much like this pink and I don't want it to look too much like the purple. So taking the same colors we used to make this, the pink and the purple, adding a little bit more of the darker colors. So I mentioned that you can go back, so we're adding mostly darker colors now. I mentioned you can go back and add the lighter colors. I'm going to show you an example of that on this orange strip that I said we were going to come back to. And you could add um, you know, more shades of these colors to each of the rows of flowers. But if you are happy with how it looks with just going over with the second layer of colors, then that is fine too. It's all up to you how much detail and, and definition you want to have in these. So in my orange, I have the orange, I have the dark orange, I'm going to go in with some of my lighter yellow, so my yellow mixed with white. I'm just going to add a little bit of this into these two shades that I already have.
Alright, <clears throat> so I'm going to leave the bottom of the orange part a little bit darker because I saw that is how it is in the picture. Okay, so we are almost done here. The last thing I want to do is go back in with some different shades of green in between these flowers. So because I used Sharpie to show you all my lines, I have some dark black lines going through this, which I'm going to kind of ignore for right now when you do it. Um, hopefully you'll have sketched lightly with your pencil so you won't have dark lines, but I am going to talk about how to do in between the flowers. Okay, so I have my green palette we've been working with here. I'm going to take a dark green and a little bit of yellow, so I'm just going for it, mixing it together. Get some of that still using my little brush. I'm just going to add some darker green in between. There was some brown in between on the photograph, um, like the dirt in between the rows. I'm not going to add that. I would like to keep this all green, but if you do want to add it to be a little bit more like the photo we're working from, that is fine. So you would do it the same way, just a few more shades, you know, so I'm adding the green like this, you can also add the brown like this. I just want to keep this all green. It's a little more transition in between. I mean, you could also have your flower rows completely touching each other. I have my wide green space here <clears throat> from my original light green we put, so I'm just going to add some darker green to this area as well. Same brush strokes up and down. Alright, so now we have our finished painting. I hope you all had fun and enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you create this or create a painting based on what you learned today here, please share it with us to our Facebook or tag us on Instagram. The information is below in the description. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Thanks!